today we're going to talk about caffeine again, which seems to be one of my favorite subjects because I've suffered a lot from this substance. So uh, there's this book. It's called the American Psychiatric Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. And in this book, there's four different types of disorders in association with caffeine. So there's number 305.9, which is caffeine intoxication. There's number 292.89, which is caffeine-induced anxiety disorder. There's number 292.85, which is caffeine-induced sleep disorder. There's number 292.9, which is caffeine-related disorder not otherwise specified. So one thing this manual doesn't list is caffeine addiction, right, in association with a medical disorder, which is a very real thing, and we all know that this is a true statement. If it did, it would state that basically 90% of Americans who consume caffeine on a daily basis would suffer from a mental illness in relationship to caffeine. Let's be honest here, caffeine is the most popular mind-altering drug in the world. But what is caffeine in nature? Caffeine in nature is a defense mechanism. It's a substance found in certain plants. If a bug bites into a plant containing caffeine, the bug will die. So this means that those 90% of Americans who are drinking caffeine on a daily basis are consuming a poisonous substance and a naturally occurring pesticide. Caffeine withdrawal symptoms, which is something I've dealt a lot with, can occur anywhere between 12 to 24 hours or more. Symptoms for caffeine withdrawal include, but are not limited to, headache, fatigue, drowsiness, difficulty concentrating, flu-like sy symptoms, depression, irritability, and anxiety. So what, am I, what exactly am I trying to say? So if you aren't feeling normal, cut out all the mind-altering substances anything that could be affecting your mental state, remove it. And if that's not the problem, continue on from there. If you're someone who can't function until you get caffeine in your system, try to work towards completely removing caffeine dependency. How do you do this? Well, for the longest time, I couldn't even do this. Then the answer came to me. I realized, for me, half of why I love to visit Starbucks so much was coming from the social interaction. And in a blink, I thought decaf espresso. So basically what I did to eliminate my caffeine addiction was that I took my regular drink, which was two shots of espresso over ice with soy, and I turned it into two shots decaf espresso over ice with soy milk. When I started this, I found that this transition off caffeine actually became one of the easiest immediate changes with caffeine that I've ever made. Now my next step is to remove the acidic drink and find a better alternative. So the question is, how important is it to you to function on your own, to be yourself, without any mind-altering substances? How important is it to you that you function on your own? That your mind is clear? That your mind is who you are and not altered by a certain substance? 